You're listening to Racing Future Radio. Here's your host, Mr. Dennis Mills, with this week's guest, Mr. John Snowman. One in particular that sort of caught my eye was the fact that you put a stress on much more accountability. Tell me, uh, did you feel that the previous uh, structure was lacking in accountability, or tell me why you put so much emphasis on that? Oh, yeah, no question about it. I mean, you know, Slots at Racetrack's program was designed to have some accountability measures in it that never really took place and never really developed. I think lots of people in the industry pointed that out over the course of a decade, but it just never really happened. And if you look around the world, you'll see that there are other kinds of programs uh, that hit a level of maturity where, where you have to start saying, what do we want to do with this? What you know, It was nice that we had a flow of uh, public support into this industry, but what are we really trying to achieve? And are we achieving that? And so our report said that from here forward, we really have to be cognizant of what is the public's interest in this? How are those that public investment, how is it being measured, and is it making the kind of difference that we want it to make? So, so it's very similar then to where governments support the automotive sector or they support the cultural sector. What uh, governments do when they usually support those various sectors, they make sure that the monies that are going into those sectors are going to the original public policy objectives. So now you're essentially using that model on the horse business. In other words, the monies aren't just going and people can do whatever they want. They've got to they've got to go there to really sort of pass the test. Yeah, are we producing are we producing what it is we want to do in terms of jobs? Um, you know, in the in the horse racing industry in Ontario is a great export business for us. So we want to I think it's got a great story. I think it's a great economic story. But you can't tell that story unless you can measure it. Right. And, and it needs to be better measured than it has been. And listen, frankly, the government keeps track of all kinds of animals, you know, farm production animals, uh, and have a detailed understanding of the impact of, say, the pork business or the beef business or, you know, or, or anything, any of those kind of farm animals. We really had no benchmark measurements for the impact of the horse industry in Ontario. And it's a big industry, it's big, it makes a, makes a huge difference in jobs and economic activity, particularly in rural Ontario. But we had no measures for it, so. How, how could that be that an industry that employs so many people that had a 12, 13 year history of a slot at racetrack sort of uh, interface partnership, how could it be that some of that sort of accountability didn't happen. It seems like a real mystery to me. Yeah, it's a good question. You know, I was there obviously when uh, in government when SARP was created, and I know it was the intention to build those measurements in. But I think that in part because there weren't a lot of benchmarks available, that proved to be problematic. And you know, it just wasn't ever top of the heap, I guess, for six, you know, governments, uh, you know, over the course of 12, 13 years. I, I think that having that kind of accountability is going to make for a much better uh, relationship between the track operators and the horsemen and uh, ultimately will create a better product for the fans. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it trues us up to a lot of things, but I, I think our biggest job, and I know we'll come back to this many times, our, our biggest job is making sure we tell our story as horsemen to the public and right. ma make sure they understand the, the economics of the business, which are important. And I think an even more important thing, which is that this has been a part of the fabric of Ontario for a long time. It's one of the things that links us around the world with a lot of other cultures. And we need to tell that story to the public better than we have. There are a lot of people that have a view that uh, the horse industry is essentially an elitist sport for the rich. They don't see the uh, spin-offs in rural Ontario. When I look out the uh, window here in downtown Toronto and see all these uh, Bay Street office towers, uh, there are very few people that understand uh, the horse industry. You know, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here today because we're going to make sure we get this message out. But tell us a little bit about the impact and the, the economic interface uh, that this provides for the province and the whole country. Well, the the, uh, the folks who think that this industry is for the rich weren't helping me bail water out of my barn <laughs> two weeks ago. So I always think that's kind of funny because there's an awful lot of this business that, you, as you know, is not particularly glamorous. The people who are employed in this business are folks who uh, a lot of them don't make a lot of money. You know, they're kind of, in many cases, low wage earners, people who are grooms and people who manage farm facilities. You know, they're not they're not well paid people, but they're really proud of what they do and they love what they do. And in some cases, they've been doing it for generations. 
and this industry, because we have investors who, you know, who might otherwise be occupied on Bay Street, because of the, their investment, we get to drive an awful lot of jobs in the rural Ontario with people who, um, who love what they do and probably are not suitable to do very many other kinds of things. I, I guess you could, I told the, the premier once that that was a pretty apt description of me. But, uh, you know, they're, they're folks who are not easily otherwise employed and, and more to the point, they love what they do. So uh, this will, is this means a lot to a lot of people who aren't very well off. Will you uh, make sure going forward that uh, this side of the story is explained to, you know, ordinary uh, non-horse people so that they, you know, when we think of the automotive sector, we understand the number of people that work on a line and the economic uh, interface uh, that uh, happens for all of us through manufacturing and through selling and uh, marketing and all the various people that are touched. I think that, that the horse industry, uh, not just here in Canada, but around the world has done a not a very good job of sort of telling their story about what they mean and what they're all about in terms of uh, their contribution. Yeah, I think there's two things, characters and people of character. And uh, I've found both in the horse industry. Uh, we don't do a very good job of telling people about, you know, who's in the industry. We don't do a very good job of telling the stories. There's, as you know, there's some fascinating, fascinating stories in this business. Uh, people who are completely dedicated to passing on to the next generation what the previous generation taught them, those those basic skills of empathy that, that are important when you're around horses. And it's a, a skill set that I think we could use more of around uh, in, in general population. And, and, and we have these great stories of people, and I know you know lots of them, uh, who are who are just amazing people and, uh, you know, very humble people usually. Uh, they don't brag a lot, but they're real proud of what they do, and we need to tell their story better. Uh, John, thank you so much for your uh, support, your dedication, and uh, good luck. Keep it going. Hope to have you back soon. All right. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Okay. You've been listening to Racing Future Radio with your host, Mr. Dennis Mills. This week's guest was Mr. John Snowblin.